I hope you enjoyed the previous video about microservices communication and you have gone through that. This video um, is about questions related to the microservices question. So I could have covered this in the same one, but that was becoming too lengthy, like 20, 25 minutes. So it's better to break that into the multiple. So it is a continuation of that one only. So let's see the questions. So first question is, what are the different ways microservices services communicate with each other? So we have seen at the starting only synchronous, asynchronous, and if we can go deep into that and explain that. What is API Gateway and why it is used in the microservices architecture? So if you see the previous video, you will learn a lot about the API Gateway and Load Balancer also and how they can help in the effective microservices communication. What is service discovery and how is it used in the microservices communication? So service discovery is comes into picture in when we are talking about the load balancer, uh, uh, when we have micro different instances of the uh, single microservice, one instance is coming, sometimes one instance is coming down, uh, going down, new instances are coming into picture. So those new instance, uh, instances uh, should have such a feature so that they are available to the clients. Uh, and load balancer takes uh, care of all these things service discovery and registry part okay what are the different types of message brokers used in the microservices communications so if you know about the message brokers like uh, implementation if i talk about active mq rabbit mq and kafka uh, these are the names that i, I know as of now that we are using in the industry for the message brokers how do you ensure the security of microservices communication? So I'll cover separate uh, about how to secure the microservices. Then we can see a lot about this one. There are different ways that we can use to uh, uh, like establish a secure uh, communication. First one, we just talked about like secure communication, HTTPS, all of our services should run on the secure protocol. Other is like some token based, some username password mechanisms are there that we can use. What is the load balancing and how it is used in the microservices already explained in the previous video circuit breaking is a pretty very very good concept it is used in the micro because when you are calling one service from other service there are pretty uh, high chances that it is not responding properly there is some irrelevant error and that can cause the entire system to, to fail in that case circuit breaker becomes very powerful tool if you have used uh, uh, while calling the other microservices the next video i am going to talk about the circuit breaker only uh, so we will discuss a lot about this one what is the role of the client side load balancer in microservices the load balancer video covers a lot about this one how do you implement microservices communication in a cloud environment there is nothing new so whatever way that we already have seen the same way we use uh, to implement the uh, microservices communication in the cloud environment as well it is it just that it, it gives lots of cloud provides a lot of services that we can use to establish the proper communication what are the advantages and disadvantages of using synchronous and asynchronous communication we can discuss a lot like it, it depends on the use case actually it's not the advantage and disadvantage it's about the use case that we have Let's see some scenario wise questions. So this is pretty uh, important when you're going the interview, they can give you some scenario and ask the follow up question on that. So first scenario is like you have two microservices that need to communicate with each other. How do you design the communication between them? So there should be a follow up question. Interviewee should ask questions. So it is just the straightforward scenario. They should ask about uh, like what is the use case? Like uh, if it, the user needs to wait for the response or not wait for the response. If you ask these questions, all the follow up questions can be answered. How do you choose the communication protocol? How do you handle service discovery and registration? How do you ensure the security of the communication? So think about the implementation that you have done and respond properly. Like communication protocol means like uh, if it is HTTP, GRPC or active MQ, uh, or AMQP is there. So based on the use case uh, that you are going to ask follow up question based on that it will decide or interviewer can ask that what you have used so you can explain uh, whatever you have is in the project uh, and what is the use case there second one is that you have a microservice that needs to send an event to multiple other microservices how do you design the communication for this scenario what type of messaging system would you use so it is talking about the events right so obviously we will use rabbit mq kafka or active mq so the, uh, uh, look look around the advantages disadvantages of all of these 
message brokers and accordingly answer the question how do you handle message serialization and deserialization we have talked about abro format json format and thrift one of that we can use how do you ensure the delivery of the messages to all the receiving microservices so when we are sending the events to the brokers we can decide it like we can uh, we can uh, configure it in such a way that we can get the acknowledgement uh, whether it is received by the broker or not and then we can uh, rely on the broker to make sure that it will be processed by the underlying system the next one is the you have a microservice that needs to call an external rest api how do you implement this communication it's uh, these are the they are talking about the scenario but the answer like it's similar like what type of the client library would you use so now you have to know the different ways that rest apis can be called if i talk about in java rest template is there spring cloud provides one other way like fin client is there that we can establish the communication web client is another way that we can call the rest api so that answers this one how do you handle the authentication and authorization for the external api uh tokens we can use spring security we can use for the authentication and authorization so if you have used spring security you will be able to answer it properly how do you handle retries and error handling for the communication so retries error handling and all that is uh the next topic circuit breaker is very important for all of these use cases like to prevent the cascading failures so uh, it is also very important to keep in mind that it is not necessary that you know all the answers if you don't know just give a logical explanation and say you know that i have not used so that makes complete sense instead of just uh, giving just some vague answer that that really gives a bad bad impression to the interviewer the next scenario is you have a microservice that needs to access a database how do you design the communication with the microservices and the database what type of database driver would you use so it depends like if you have oracle mysql or some no sql provider so driver choice will depend on that how do you handle connection pooling and transaction so if you are using a spring boot these things are provided by default so connection pooling helps in like uh, connection pooling the pool name itself suggests that you all the time you are establishing the connection with the database you don't have to create that you will use the existing connection that is available Uh, in the pool so that's how it improves the efficiency how do you ensure the security of the communication again coming to the, the, it can be like uh, so it is a two way like database is there so it is secured we need some username password around that one so who whoever microservices calling they need to pass that username password so it's another question that we have to configure that username password in our microservices so there are different ways that we can do so plain text we cannot store in the microservices so we can use some third party provider or we can some uh, put some encryption around that one then then we can store it uh i think it is a final one here you have a microservice that needs to expose an api to the client how do you design the communication between the microservices and the client what type of api gateway would you use so it is it depends like uh, if i want to use uh, some open source or if i am on a cloud architecture i can use that is provided by the cloud so if aws is there so aws api gateway google cloud is there so apache is there that we can use next one is the how do you handle the rate limiting and caching for the api we can use uh, this rate limiting and caching thing we can apply on the api gateway label itself how do you ensure the security of the communication again uh, it's it's about the implementation if you have done it you cannot make up these answer so uh, go to this scenario think about the scenario and try to do some demo project around that and then you will be able to answer these properly so that's it about uh, this microservices communication i hope you learned something uh, so the list of questions that i have provided maybe uh, might be that can help you while you are preparing for the interview so yeah i will see you in the next one so with that i i say goodbye thank you for your time i'll see you in the next one bye bye